Labas. Welcome to uh, Jagiris on Air. Uh, this whole entire episode will be in English. Uh, a little switch up. I am Thomas Walkup here with special guest Casey Rivers. Casey, how you doing today? I'm good, Tommy. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm uh, I'm excited. You know, this will be the first time. Obviously, I've done something like this. Only one other time I've been in your seat. Uh, but this will be first time I am hosting. Um, how many podcasts have you done? None. This is my first None. podcast. First podcast. Are you an avid listener of podcasts? Uh, depends on what I'm listening to. Uh, usually, I follow some things. Uh, you know the who is it? Uh, Matt Barnes, uh, mm-hmm. Stephen Jackson have the All in Smoke. So that's been a big podcast to kind of follow. You get kind of more of an insight of different guys they've, they've spoken to. So it's just you hear different stories you don't hear too too often. So yeah. it's, it's great to check out. I think that's one of the coolest thing about podcasts. Um, with people that you don't get to talk to usually, you right. know, usually it's with celebrities or athletes that you follow, of this course, or, or people that you look up to, and it gives you an inside look of you know what you don't usually get to see. Oh, that, absolutely. So yeah, I'm 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 excited. Uh, got some questions here for you. All right, sure. Um, start out with some easy ones. TikTok, you're new to it. Yes. Talk to me about it. Uh, it was my wife's idea. Uh, just <laughs> more sort of a branded thing, you know, something still new that's still relatively on the social media market. A little different than Instagram, just more so videos. But, you know, it's more of an interaction, trying to be more of uh, letting people into who I am, uh, what I'm about, you know, still showing the basketball side. I don't think I show too much of basketball or family, for that matter. I'm still kind of reserved, so... Just still trying to lighten up a little bit and, you know, be a little more open sure, sure. for fans and people to see how I live or, you know, what I'm doing occasionally. Do you find that a hard balance as a as a basketball player with, you know, okay, I'm, I'm a single guy, I don't have kids or a wife or anything to show off to the world. Do you think that there, that's something that you've kind of like been in the middle of, of how much do I want to put my kids out there in my life, what we're doing all the time? Of course, man. I think uh, it's hard, man. I mean, it's not like we have paparazzi here following sure, us and stuff, sure. but, you know, here we're, we're a bigger star than we would be back home. So it's like on the level of being here, you try to safeguard your kids as much as possible. You don't right. want them so much of being in every photo, having everybody taking photos right. or wanting to take photos with them. And, right. you know, you're trying to – you know, protect their innocence. You know, right right now they're they're still young. They don't know much of what's going on. They know like, oh, daddy, you know, plays basketball. Everybody loves daddy. You know, it's like, so it's like right now it's still that you know that the level of innocence. So yeah. it's like trying to protect that, and you know, you know, being the forefront of everything. Trying to keep them innocent as as long as possible. Yeah. As long as possible. <laughs> tell, well, speaking about that, tell us about your. Uh, I, your kids, I know. I know your boy. Since he's gotten over here, has has disrupted your sleep pattern <laughs> a little bit. You told me a little bit about that. Yeah. Uh, but they they weren't here for a while, and then they just just recently got here. Tell yeah. tell us uh, a little bit about what's that, what that's like to you know have them here. Oh, uh, it's great, man. Um, you know, it's just still me learning to, to be a better father, still learning to 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 do better as things because they're young, so their energy level is like unmatched, it's untapped. It's like it's like from the time that foot hits the floor in the morning until it's like 11, 12 at night. It's like they're still having full energy. So for me, it's not. I'm, I'm not like a super, super energetic guy. It's still something I'm never adjusted to. But it's great. It's hard to be in a house when there's no noise and it's like quiet. It's like empty. You really, you can feel the, the alone, being alone, the aloneness. Yeah. And then when you have noise and everything, it's like, all right, you know, it's great. Like, you know, something's going on. You're into something. So... Having my wife and kids here is, is great. It's a little more of a comfort, you know. I'm more yeah, at ease absolutely. because we're all together. When you separate it, you're like kind of on edge. It would, me living in California, that's a ten hour time difference from here. So right. you like your times of talking and everything. You kind of having to match up, and yeah. when they're up, I'm going down, and when I'm down, they're going right, up. So it's like right. it's it's like literally trying to find a, a match and a balance to mm-hmm. communicate and, and stay in the know. You know, I, it's funny you say that, that you know, y'all are a 10-hour difference because there was a, my first year in Germany, it was a 7-hour difference, and then now here it's an 8, and only that 1-hour difference That's I feel is difference. a pretty big difference. And what was it when you were in Spain this year, 6? Spain, seven? it was 6. Oh, well, so, Spain, it was uh, from the East Coast, it was 9. So it's like, okay. but uh, living in the East Coast before, it used to be so much easier because mm-hmm. it was like, okay, 6 hours, you got a little window where it's like, all right, we kind of, Somewhere in the same right. kind of like day standard, but yeah. like 
nine hours, nine, ten. It's, it's like, a huge difference. It really is. Imagine living in Russia, man. Yeah. That's that's yeah. That's, um, that's even worse. Yeah, and and I just found like the the one hour makes a pretty big difference, and I, that that's kind of something that you know I've thought about is um, you know what would how much more comfortable would you feel just being a couple hours you know closer to home? Oh man, who who can imagine like yeah. just yeah. Um, so back to TikTok, I feel like uh, you used to be a little more uh, active on social media. Um, mm. True or not true? It's kind of hit or miss. It just depends. Yeah. Like, uh, again, like it's social media is a thing. Like you, you'll get on there, you'll watch stuff, but you won't, you know, you won't necessarily post things. You know, it's like, what what do you actually post? Like for us, it's like, okay, we post a lot of basketball stuff. And, you know, you get more likes on basketball things or things geared to your sport. Then if you post something common as you walking down Old Town or something, right. it's like, uh, yeah, what is this? Cares. And it's like, but you're trying to show, like, all right, I'm at least trying to observe the city that I'm in. Because most guys, you know, a lot of guys don't come to a city and actually try to observe it or taste the food or, you know, kind of dive into the culture sure, sure. to understand it. So it's like that's not really a necessity. So it's like yeah. trying to actually... I need to be better at like kind of just using the little bit of brand that I do have of myself to yeah. kind of see the the cultural side of things, even if it's just you know riding around seeing well, okay, what is this? What is this? You know, or this is a traditional dish of Lithuania. You know, just something that uh, probably just gear my readers or my, yeah. excuse me, my followers, my viewers <laughs> <laughs> into you know my TikTok or so or uh, Instagram. Yeah, and you have quite a few. What do you have? Fifty thousand followers, something on uh, uh, Instagram. Like forty six, forty seven. Yeah. Uh, you know. Uh, do you think this is uh, is something that is okay? People place value on this of uh, popularity, but that's not what the type of value I'm talking. I'm talking about like the brand that you've created is something that you could turn into, you know, monetizing it, you know, after I, your I career, mean, something I, like this. I hope, man, you know, I think I got to get better at learning how to brand myself, how to put myself mm-hmm. in the right avenues of being seen. Again, it's different, you know, if we were NBA players, the guys, you know, big time celebrities back home, I think it's the, the avenues are easier. It's, it's much more channels you can sure. pass through to kind of brand yourself and, get out there but over here it's like a a select hand few of guys who can actually channel those and and actually garnish a brand where it's better for them for us it's like you're trying to find multiple ways of okay how can I be a part of this how can I you know garnish this sponsorship and how can I do this like I I did body armor like Mm -hmm. uh, I drank body armor all summer working out great drink you know Kept posting it, kept posting no it. No free ads. <laughs> kept posting it. Uh, my trainers, uh, my guys back home, uh, got Jordan Lawley, he's a NBA trainer, big time guys, big time on Instagram. And, you know, his partners was like, you know, yo, you should start tagging them. Mm-hmm. He's like, the more you tag them, you know, the more they see, you know, eventually, you know, they might reach out. So kept doing it, kept doing it. Eventually, yeah, I got a message from Body Armor. They're mm-hmm. like, hey, you know. You start posting this every time you post or anything on social media, you know, you're getting quite a few caseloads of free, you know, whatever yeah. drinks you want, however you want it, and whatever you need, like towels, whatever, to, to sure. keep supporting the brand. So it just start working out that way. Yeah. But then you try other stuff and it's still like, all right, nobody's really like, it's like, okay, it's like you're kind of on a small scale right. compared to whatever they're looking Feels for. Feels like nobody cares. Yeah, but it, I to mean, a it, realistically, it's like, okay, if you take, for instance, like, Nike or Jordan or something like that. It's like guys like us, if we're here and we promote something like that, um, of course the sales are already high, but you're promoting it in a place that's less popular Most with, popular with the sure. shoes. Like right. So now it's like you got people wanting to know, okay, where can I get these shoes in Lithuania? Like, you right. know what I'm saying? It's, like it's, it's other ways to keep profiting mm-hmm. in areas that are, are less profited in your brand. But, you know, I guess sure. people, you know, look at it like it's still just – Small, so. yeah, 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 smaller market somewhere where they maybe haven't tapped into or haven't wanted to tap to, into, even if you know they have their product there. Right. Um, so you mentioned your summers when you're talking about body armor. How do you approach your summers now differently compared to you know when you were you, when you were young in your career? When you're young, younger, you're, you're, younger, yeah, younger, yeah. excuse me. <laughs> When you're young, though, when you think about it, when you're young, like again, it's that energetic part where it's like, all right, you can do whatever, you can take a month off, a month and a half, and then pick it back up, gain your energy back, try to get back in shape right before the season start. But as the older you get, 
you know, the body is, it dives different. Like mm-hmm. you literally have to kind of listen to your body. Sure. So this past summer I took a week and a half off and mm-hmm. then I was back at it nonstop. Yeah. Like I was going six days a week, lifting, working out, you know, outdoors enjoying like literally trying to enjoy like the sun i come home like the kids are in the pool like we're in the pool we're outside like so i still was able to like enjoy just the sun but it literally in my head was like okay i gotta change my diet right i gotta you know really try to become better in these next few years because these are like everybody says your prime is in your late 20s Mm -hmm. but it's like your prime is pretty much that I say that 29 to like 34 window right. because then that's like you're, you're garnishing your max that you can possibly get yeah. because then you get kind of not pushed out the door, but now you're on that kind of downside. But it's you keep your body intact and mm-hmm. keep everything in order and you kind of, you know, look physically fit and able to go. Sure. Sometimes that 29 to 34 goes to 29, maybe to 36, maybe right, to 37. Yeah, so it's like you can push on more. So I looked at it like, all right, I got to find a way to to keep my body intact. I got to find a way to start eating better, to consistently eat better, mm-hmm. and, you know, really, like, take the training serious. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I was... Uh I was reading something recently about how basically everything you do is a long-term investment for your career. Everything you eat is a long-term investment. When you train, how you recover, I mean, everything, your, the, what you do for your skills, it's, you know, a long-term investment for your next contract. Right. You know, it's always of course. an investment. So how do you, how do you approach that as far as, you know, when you're young, everything that you do is kind of on the go, on the go, on the because go. Because you, you got energy. You right. can just do whatever. Like, yeah. it's like, you, you, it's like you, you're invigorated. It's like, yeah. but yeah, the yeah, older yeah, you true. get, it's like, all right, uh, I got to rest, but I got to be able to keep up because now you got a new batch of young guys trying to come in. And <laughs> Every it's like, year is a new you, batch. Yeah, you, you got to keep up. So, I mean, I went like two years ago, I did the the keto diet. Like mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. my two years in Panther Night goes, I think I was around... 106, 107 kilos, which, you know, pounds is like 236, 240. So everybody's like, oh, he's able to guard the stronger guys. He can handle his own. But in one breath, it was good for people because I was, I had the strength. But for me, I felt dead. I felt sluggish. Mm-hmm. I couldn't move really. So I did keto for the year, for part of the year where I was like inactive. I didn't have a job. So I'm sitting at home. I'm like, all right, I got to do something to really change my body. And within like two and a half months, I went from like 107 kilos to down to like 95, 96 kilos. Like I was like 210. Like yeah, yeah. I went to Reggie Amelia. I signed a Reggie Amelia. They're looking at like a picture of me and Panther Nichols and look at me there. They're like, wait, this is not this the is same, not same person. person. <laughs> like it's like, it's like what happened is like literally like I changed everything, how yeah. I was eating, like literally lost like a lot of weight, a lot of fat, like felt better, felt more energized, rejuvenated. So after having that happen, it's like I tried to stick to keeping that regimen or, or kind of really watching mm-hmm. what I eat to to stay in shape. Yeah. Uh, before this before this uh, podcast, you had in, uh, mentioned that you had a bunny. No. Yes, we bought a bunny. That my wife and kids convinced me to buy a bunny. Like. <laughs> I'm Great. shocked that that happened only after your wife and kids got here and not before. Oh no! Nah, well, I, listen, listen. I, I, I was stuck stone in my in my stance. Like, yo, I'm not buying another pet. We got a dog back in the U.S. Cool. Like, that's all we need. And then you know, in came kind of the waterworks. My daughter, like, oh man, like it's so hard to say no to kids. Like. My son kind of, he was just like, well, dad, I like the bunny. Like, you know, cool. My daughter was like, no, I really want the bunny. And then here comes my wife, like icing on the cake, like mm. just mm. solidifies it. Like just it's hard to all be the bad facts. Guy. Oh, man, listen, it's, it's like. to be the bad guy. And it's, you just look at your daughter. She's like about the eyes about to just <laughs> overflow. And you're like, oh, my God. Like. So it's like, okay, like which one do we want? Like, right. So it's like I gave in, and I, I was trying, but. It's actually growing on me, man. It's, yeah. It's actually, yeah, it's just, we let him out. He bounces around. He's his name Bean. Bean the Bunny. Bean. I mean, what an awesome name. Bean the Bunny. I love so. it. I love it. Uh, you mentioned you had a dog. Dog guy. Yes. I'm glad you're not a cat guy. <sighs> Cats are the worst. I get. I got. I think I got like a, a cat allergy or something like that. Oh, like yeah. Well, like good. if cats around. Like I had a cat one time crawl through my face and like 
Next thing you know, my face like swole up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh, I guess I'm not cats are not my yeah. thing. Uh, any animals, any other animals that you like or don't like? <sighs> I'm not a snake guy, man. Ugh. I cannot stand snakes, bro. I don't understand they, how anybody could be a snake guy. They make my skin crawl, man. They, the, listen, like, I've been traumatized by snakes since I was like a kid. Like, well, you've been wanting to? No, I've been traumatized. Like, oh, I never, I never wanted you one. No, 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 sorry, no, no. Uh, my teacher, science teacher, had a, a Burmese python, big yellow one. So, like, I always tell this Don't story. Understand. Like, people go, like, all the kids in the class, my classmates, they go up there. She lets them like touch the snake. Touch the snake. Snake is cool. Like, not moving really. Me, happy go lucky, goes up there, laughs, get ready to touch the snake, head moves up, you know, kinda I was like, ah, yeah. Nah, no I'm thanks. okay. Like no once thanks. the head moved and it kinda looked no. like it, it was like it didn't move for nobody else. Like yeah. <laughs> I didn't see it move, like head didn't move. Yeah, you so didn't. as I get up there, like the head kinda moves, it's like, yeah. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> I was I a target. <laughs> uh so here you got you got a short sleeve shirt on, I can see your tattoos poking out. Um what was your first tattoo? My first tattoo was like a cross. Like I went and got like the the typical like cross, like something that I wanted. Uh, At what age was that? Uh, what was this? It was going into my sophomore, uh, junior year in college. Okay. It was like the start. It was like the summer of going into my junior year of college. I came home and it's like I want a tattoo. What'd your mom think about that? Uh, she was just like you growing up to make your own decisions, you know. Uh, I can't really say much. She said because uh, when I was like twelve, I took a eraser. And I, like, marked my initials. Like, mm-hmm. I burnt the initials yeah. in my arm. So she was like, I mean, you pretty much had one since you were 12. So <laughs> <laughs> I can't even say nothing to you. So I got that one. And then it was kind of like a, a trickle effect. So then I got the next one, like, right before the season started. Yeah. And more so, uh, I want to say, like, once I got overseas, like, I just kind of started seeing, like, yeah, seeing things. Yeah, seeing things I liked and got them. Yeah. Any any of them that's like a, a favorite one or a special meaning? It's, something it's that's, hard. Like my kids, I have my kids uh, yeah. both on, the, on both arms, so that would probably be my most special. Yeah. You know, I have ones that are like very detailed that I like, but like these will always be my special because mm-hmm. they're my kids. You of know, course, so. of course. Uh, back to your early, early uh, hooping days, high school, Oak Hill. Whew. Yes. This is uh, for, for people that don't know, Oak Hill is a very prestigious um, prep school. And uh, this is where basically all the best high school basketball yeah. players go to play in the, in the States. Yeah. Uh, talk about Oak Hill and kind of what it was like that was different than your average, you know, public school, you know, basketball experience. It's a, it was a challenge because you you with the, the best of the best. Mm-hmm. So it's like you're practicing against these guys every single day. So it's, it's literally you're practicing with them. You're in the gym. Like we used to be in the gym 1 a.m., like – on the weekends playing basketball mm-hmm. like you just playing pickup like it was just that love like everybody had like we were really a unit yeah but you talk about i think the very first time i met uh ray john rondo was like here like he came from kentucky like you know the thing was like who is this guy nobody's really heard of him you know he wasn't really you know in the states we have rankings so it's like he wasn't ranked this high he wasn't like a highly touted ranked guy that everybody knew about but then it's like the first couple of days it's like wow like how does nobody hear about this guy Mm -hmm. like he's he's got it you know and then of course you had josh smith he was on everything sports illustrated espn the magazine you know he he, you know high school all-american he was already at that that peak so when you had two guys like that my junior year was like okay we got something special to do Mm -hmm. we played Roughly 50 games, which is odd in yeah, high school. Yeah, I, think, I you think know, I played less than 30. Yeah, high school, you play roughly 50. I think they only counted us for that year, like 42, because mm-hmm. eight of those games we came to Spain. We played in wow, Spain. I've uh, heard a story about In uh, La Hospitalet, uh, the junior tournament, we came, we got invited, and we came. And the funniest thing is, is we didn't come with our whole team. We came with six people. <laughs> like, some guys had uh, passport issues, couldn't get passports in time. Uh, we had a couple of guys, one guy from Albania who couldn't get a visa in time. We had a Lithuanian guy ah. at the at the time that was there. He didn't travel with us. I, well, I think he did. I'm not sure. But we had, like, six, seven guys. So we went there. We played Russia. We played Italy. We played, we played a lot of places. Teams, yeah. And we literally destroyed everybody yeah. with six people. You played uh, at one point in the— that tournament, you played uh, El Chacho, yeah? Yeah, we played Chacho. That was the first time we, we ran into Chacho. They brought him down from 
the first team. He was playing in Estudiantes. They brought him down from the first team just to play in the games against us. So I'm sure there's a lot of buzz about you guys being there. Yeah, he matched up against Ray John Rondo. That was the first time, you know, that was ever any matchup. You know, the whole thing with him getting drafted, Rondo getting drafted. Actually, mm -hmm. got, I think they got traded for each other mm -hmm. at one point. So it's like, it's kind of, you know, odd they how have things a nice work history out. Against yeah. each other. But Rondo had 55 points, 20 assists that day. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> it's just crazy, man. It's just, yeah. it's, it's really crazy. Uh, do you think playing at Oak Hill, uh, let me let me backtrack a little bit. I think most kids really start growing up when they get to college. Right. Do you think playing at Oak Hill helped you grow up and mature faster than, than most kids? We were we were way more mature yeah. at our age than than most because you're 15, 16, 17. We had a guy on the team who was like a sophomore, like so he's 14, 15 years old, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like you literally having to govern yourself as a kid. Like we had a... Our coach's wife, Mrs. Smith, was like the mom to everybody. Yeah. And she was no tolerance. She didn't take no ish from nobody. Mm -hmm. So it's like you out of line. She would come to the dorm room, check you right there, let she you got know. The pat, she got the yeah. paddle. Right? Basically, she'd call your parents, <laughs> tell you like, hey, this is what's going on. It's like she gets the clearance to like check you right there, like what's going on. And it was like no no nonsense. Like yeah. you knew like she kept, she stayed on top of everybody with the grades. But you still had to. Okay, know to eat, know to do your laundry, right. you know, make up your bed, you know, stuff sure, like she, that. It's not like you were living at no, her house no, when you, she was you, doing you, all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, you're in a dorm room. It's just you and, and mm -hmm. 10, 12 other guys with your, one of your assistant coaches who lives in the dorm with you. And it's basically you learning to be a man, be, yeah, a, be, be a guy on your own. Yeah, you know, parents sure. come visit, they come to games, but they leave. So yeah. it's like, yeah. here it is. You got to really govern yourself and keep yourself on the straight and narrow, making yeah. sure you have all your priorities in a row. Sure, sure. And then on to Clemson, where you personally had a very successful career. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I owe a lot to Clemson. I had a, a terrible injury my senior mm -hmm. year in high school. Uh, literally, it, it made everybody kind of drop off because they thought I wasn't going to play basketball again. So mm -hmm. uh, the coach from Clemson came to the hospital right after I got out of surgery. And he told me, he's like, listen, I don't care if you can play another day in your life. He's like, I'm going to give you this four-year scholarship. Mm -hmm. He's like, because you deserve education just as much as anybody else. And I felt loyal to that. You know, sure, even absolutely. coming back and having different teams or, you know, people telling me I should have went, you know, to prep, a fifth-year prep just mm -hmm. to kind of rehab and get back. But it was just like – it. I didn't. I didn't want to do that. So yeah, I mean, whenever a coach is willing to show you that sort of loyalty, that's no, a yeah, guy that you you feel respected. Like, yeah, you know, you, you need like to go ahead and, and take that because exactly. there's a lot of coaches that wouldn't honor that. No, not at all. It's like oh, move on to the next guy. So mm -hmm. and that's. I mean, college basketball definitely is a, a cutthroat you know, it's a thing, business. You know where, uh, and really all professional sports is. It's like if you're not. You know, going to be the guy that you know gets it done, especially immediately. Right. You know, they're going to move on to the next guy. So for, so for your guy to to come in and, and say that you know in the hospital is right, yeah, is pretty special. It, it was great. It, it, it meant it meant something. So mm -hmm. it, it, my loyalty lied to like, all right, this is where I'm going to go. Yeah, um, and then on to your your professional career. You know, I was I was doing a little bit of research, probably not as much as I should have done. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, it was amazing to see you know all the places that you you've played. I mean, you've played uh, you know the, all the powerhouses all across Europe: uh, Greece, Spain, Italy, Germany, Lithuania. Uh, what am I missing? Uh, that's about it. I mean, that's I mean, uh, uh, yeah. That's a bunch of hot spots. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, but uh, early on, uh, Treviso, yeah? Yeah, Benetton. That was more so not on the downside of it, but I think the the tide was kind of turning from Benetton a little bit. You know, they invested so much. They've been known, used to be known as like the 30th NBA team for a mm -hmm. while. They've had, you know, Bargnani. They had guys, you know, Tony Kukoc. These guys come through. The program, Obradovich was a coach there, yeah. you know, so, and, you know, it, it has its history, but it, it was great, you know, it was a great start, and it actually wasn't my start there, it was a small city outside of Rome, Latina, mm -hmm. where I was like one of the first of two Americans to, to play in the, the organization, so yeah. it was like a big deal, but... I performed so well in the first eight games, and Trevizo needed a guy, it was like a blessing that I, I was able to, to leave such a place like Latina and Mucha Treviso play first division right. and then it was like it just took off. 
And when you were there, you like, you were averaging twenty five and yeah, and like yeah, six in the first yeah, first like, eight games. <laughs> like, <laughs> no was, wonder you got bought out. <laughs> it was cra- it was crazy because I was over there like literally like almost turned into a point guard. Like yeah, I yeah. literally started t- turning into a point guard. And I remember my first coach. Uh, he called a timeout, and I think we was down like it was like twenty to to, to five or something. He looks at me. He's like, "Hey, I didn't sign you to." To pass the ball, like he's like score. He's like, I don't need you to pass, like just score. You were out there trying to like, make the I was right try, play. I was trying, I was trying to keep thing. the team involved, like because you know European basketball is it's a team game. Sure. So after he said that, it's like that game. I think I finished with like thirty five. Like I literally was just out there scoring. We ended up losing, but yeah. you said say that, no more. Yeah, I'll shoot yeah, it. Yeah, he was just like, yeah, I don't, I don't need you to do that. He's like, listen. He's like, you know, you just score the basketball. Yeah. yeah. And so, you're you're a guy too that whenever you start to feel it, you really start to feel it. I just, just a volume guy, like a mm-hmm. rhythm guy. I mean, yeah. I, more so when you talk about my career in general, I just look at myself as a glue guy. Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm. I, I, I can accept being a glue guy. I've never been the guy to say like, yeah, I'm like a superstar. Like I'm like the man. Like I'm I'm I, I'm able to accept that I'm never going to be at that level of like uh you know a Mike James or a, a Decolo or you know any of these guys that you hear about most. That's that's, that's relatively like yeah skill it's, yeah it's not it's not going to be yeah. my thing. I just specialize in a lot of things. I'm not yeah. just gifted at one thing, so I look at myself more as like that that glue guy. Yeah, sometimes I think that glue guys get labeled for not having a ton of skill though. And yeah, you, of course. You, and you have a ton of skill. Like you like you know how to get your shots off, uh very smooth with it, but also <laughs> dead eye, dead yeah. eye shooter. But and that's the thing is like uh I literally look at basketball I think in terms of there's a lot of a lot of things now where it's just needs of one dimensional things. Mm-hmm. It's like in basketball, you got to be more than just one dimensional. You can't just if you're a shooter, okay, yeah, but how can you be a better shooter and something else? Like you know, they talk about three and D guys, but mm-hmm. most of the time, it, realistically, most of these guys are still one dimensional. It's like right. they can shoot, but the defense, shooters that try to play defense, yeah, the defense <laughs> is still kind of in, inconsistent. And right. it's like I'm not saying you got to be the the lockdown defender, but you got to have some sort of smarts or wits to play defense. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not going to be the quickest guy. You're not going to be the fastest, but you have to have some way of being the smartest or outsmarting the mm-hmm. opponent. But, yeah, I think, yeah, like you say, glue guys kind of get lost in the sense of, like, that they're just one-dimensional. It's not right. they, they can do a lot of things. It's just, like, it's not one thing Absolutely. that stands out. Absolutely. Um, back to Treviso. You played with Monte Yunus there. Yeah, yeah, Donnie. Donnie was young. I think Donnie was 17 at the time. So it was like a, it was relatively a, a young team. Like, yeah. I think our oldest guys was uh, the Eastern European guys, one from, uh, I want to say Ukraine or Romania, I want to say. Mm-hmm. And then we had a couple guys from Croatia. So they were like more so the older guys. And then just in the middle was myself and Gary Neal. Mm-hmm. And then you had Monte Yunus and uh, Gentile. Yeah. These guys, they're like 17, 16 years old, 15. So it was still like a, it was like a, a mixture. Good, so a good yeah. Match. yeah. Uh, but Monte Yunus won Rising Star of Euro Cup that year. Well, it was the following year. The following, the following year, year he ended up winning in, in the Euro Cup. They made it to Euro Cup again. So. Could you tell early on that first year that he was, that he was very, very talented, skilled, can, could you tell that he was going to be as good as he turned out to be? You could see, you could see the potential. I mm-hmm. mean, you know, seventeen year old kid playing in, you know, first, first division uh, Italy. You know, for Benetton Treviso, you could kind of see it. And I mean, it, it's different because we had the tell of two teams. Like mm-hmm. the first time, we had one coach, we had an Italian coach, and then they brought in uh, the Croatian coach, uh, Repuza. So things kind of turned, but. You could see his work ethic was, you know, vastly improving, mm-hmm. but it still was like a, a, a learning curve for everybody, sure. you know. Well, I think I think that's one of the most interesting things about European basketball. You know, I didn't start playing European basketball until I was 24 years old. I was a grown man physically, right. mentally. I, I kind of figured it out already. You know, most of these kids are, you know, uh, Rokas was playing, you know, with grown men, when, you know, 16, yeah, 17 no. years old. And to think about where I was at 16, 17, I would have gotten eaten up out here. You know, yeah, they would and, be taking the ball from me at half court. But it's, it's, <laughs> it's a thing, it's a, it's a confidence thing. It, it, it is a confidence thing. I mean, look, I played with Luka Nontich. Mm-hmm. You know, Luka from 
three years, the the two and a half years that I spent kind of around Madrid, it was just like, okay, here's Luka Doncic. You know, he was 15, 16 years old. He practiced with us a little bit. You know, summertime, that's what they use. They use the young guys, you know, because most of the guys are with national teams. So the young guys play, you know, Mm -hmm. and you can see his his confidence level. He had the confidence that he could play, but he still had that that youth side of him where he still was trying to find that balance. And then the next year, it was like I left and then I signed back. And then it's like, You're coming back to see a completely different guy. His mentality was different. That Uh confidence changed. He knew he could play. But it still was just that small little hatch where it was like, just own it that you yeah. know you you belong. Like right. and then that and again, and then it was like a trickle effect. That following year, yeah. it was like, oh, he he, he belongs. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he, he belongs. So. Well, I think I you know you touched on confidence. I really think that confidence is a skill. You know, it's it's something that you know you can really that can fluctuate, okay. and that you know most people in the NBA have an extreme amount of confidence of course you know um and sometimes that's it's not a difference of you know their basketball skills or how they approach the game it's just a matter of that you know some of these guys have an incredible amount of confidence in how they carry themselves how they play with just a swagger i think that that is such a you know valuable thing to have exactly it is it is um but okay back to Doncic. could you tell early on that he was going to be this good I mean, he's I'm been not on say, an absolute tear. I, I mean, I, I don't, I don't really say it this good, but I knew he was going to be a problem. Mm-hmm. Like it just was. When you see kids like, and you know, you see these guys that come in, and you can tell like some like, you can see some that's been told like they've been great their whole life, or they've been, you know, this good, and they're killing everybody, and then they get to a certain level, and then they kind of just blend in, mm-hmm. and then you can tell those just like they get to that certain level, and then it's like they continue to try to rise because they want to be in that that top echelon, sure. and he continued to rise. Like he he still was kid like, but the maturity was starting to mm-hmm. develop. So it was like at some point he would have been where he was, whether it was. Last year, this year, you know, so right, like he, yeah. he, he would have had the opportunity, but I mean, it, to see what he's doing in the NBA, like, and he said himself, it's more space. So mm-hmm. for sure. him to have more space to do the things that he was doing in Europe, that's even more more of an yeah. unbelievable feat. Yeah. So and you know, I think there's a ton of differences between you know European basketball and, and NBA it's basketball. A huge but, difference. But there's just some guys that are fit for the NBA. You know that you know they if they came over here, they wouldn't be as successful. And there's a you know a ton of guys that are extremely successful over of here course. that don't have you know near the game for for an NBA exactly. team. Exactly. Um, but but in Madrid, you played uh, and really your whole career, you've played alongside Lithuanians. Uh, you played <laughs> yeah. Machulis and yeah. uh, Madrid, obviously Leca. You know, played yeah. Pana and here. Uh, one of your Clemson guys was a Lithuanian. You had mentioned obviously Monte Yunus and Treviso, uh, Galis and Belonga. Um, you have a favorite favorite Lithuanian teammate, and you better I mean you better say one of them. Favorite man, it's hard to say. I'll say it for you, Leka. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I, I feel like like Machulius. Like I, I love Jonas just because he he was like he was a funny guy. Right. Like, he, he, he's he's a f- fun guy to hang around. You know, he, he just was like an exciting Leka. Of course, like we all, we all get a kick out of Leka. Yeah, just cause great guy. He's, great he's the, guy. He's the quiet guy, but when he speaks, sometime and the things that he says, it's like. Okay, I didn't expect that to come yeah, from you. Yeah, so yeah, it's like yeah. it's like that the unexpected conversations. But no, I mean, you know, with Donnie, he was seventeen, so it was like you know we were still kind of relatively close in age. You yeah. know, we were still young. I'm fresh out of college. You know, he's a young kid, mm-hmm. so hanging out. You know, we go out as a team or whatever. Like we all kind of still had the young guy mentality. So you know, you have your your, your kind of sure sure your, your, your group a little bit but yeah, yeah for sure these these guys uh I, I love the guys you know they, they've yeah. always been great uh with Lucas it, so you played with him three years ago two what years was ago that? yeah two years ago yeah have you noticed because then he was I mean he's still a young guy he was what 23 now he's 25 26 yeah. have you noticed just in those couple years a, a difference in personality or a difference in game no, his, game, his game his game has improved he's he's definitely more yeah. he's more confident I mm-hmm. think you know being back here with, with Saris is has been great for him just because he has that ultimate motivator mm-hmm. you know and it's nothing like being at home and you know having one of your your beloved countrymen 
you know, being your, your motivator. I'm sure, I don't know if, if Sars is his idol, but I'm sure somewhere he's in there. And to, to work alongside and have your your idol become your, your mentor, your yeah. coach, and, you know, the guy that's pushing you every day, it's like, what more could you ask for? So right. it's like, I've, I've definitely seen the improvement, his, his level of attack, his aggression, his, his confidence is different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, because obviously I just played him last year twice, and then this year he really does look like a completely different well, he's player. He's more reserved. I mean, because yeah. I think when you're away from everything that you know and you've never sure. – and I'm not going to say he's never been away because I don't know, but when you go somewhere like Panathinaikos, is another – rich history of ch titles, a club that, you know, garnishes everything. Mm -hmm. And it's like you're playing here, but you're playing behind a guy like Nick Kalathis, you know, who's, you know, uh, a star in his right, own so right. play 30 minutes a yeah, game. So yeah, so it's like you're trying to find your footing, you know, the city's bigger. It's a little different, you know. Sure. But it's different of that level of comfort when you, now you're at home and, you you know, you, you, you're with your own countrymen. You, you have your – your people that you're able to kind of more relax and you're giving kind of the keys a little bit mm -hmm. to like, for sure. here you go, you know, drive the car, that, like, let's go. So for him, I think now it's like he spent two years kind of learning the trade of, as he said, running the team, kind mm -hmm. of how to, you know, pick and choose the spots. And it's, it's been working out for him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He's been <laughs> in unbelievable yes. form this season. Uh, your time at Powell had a little bit of a rough ending, yeah? Yeah, very rough ending. Um, <laughs> I, I was stumbling upon your uh, Instagram last night, and you had a, a caption after, uh, I think it was after the Serbian Cup last year, uh, when you hit four, five, three, yeah. you had something along the lines of, old old man still got it, or once yeah, a, yeah. a shooter, always a shooter. Always a shooter, always a shooter, man. Was that, was that sort of a, sh a shot at those guys? Uh, it's, it's not really a shot. I think it's a shot at everybody, man. Yeah. I mean, it's like, you know... Um, me personally, I always feel like I'm the, uh, I get the short end of the stick in the sense of like necessarily when it comes to contracts, when it comes to different things, it's mm -hmm. like, you know, it's like I get sometimes it's like I always felt like I'm the last guy to sign. Yeah, and it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's kind of been that way in like a couple of years. It's like, you know, you're sitting, you're waiting and then it's like. Oh boom! Casey was like, "Okay, yeah, we can. You know, this is what we got left. Yeah, you go. maybe like, you feel like you weren't the first option. Yeah, but, like he's like, it's like you like the fourth or fifth option, and it's like sometimes you look at it like that, but then it's like you sign somewhere, you know, people love you, you know, they want you back, and then you have a mishap, and then it's like everything that you talked about doing, everything that you had discussion about goes out the door. Right. One from a misdiagnosis, mm -hmm. and then it's like. Even when you come back fully strong, because it's not like I didn't finish the season. Like, I right. finished the season. So yeah. it's like when something's out of your control and people don't understand when things are out of your control, it's like how do you come back from that? Right. right. And it's like it wasn't it wasn't like somebody, you know, necessarily walked me out the door and said, hey, thank you for all. It was just like, all right, he's gone. Yeah. And it's like I gave everything, you mm -hmm. know, to try to, to help win for the club. And it's like I gave my all. And it's literally like – I basically just got like a boot out the door, like, right. you know, nothing, you know. Even going back, you know, I would have thought, you know, hey, it would have been something, but it, it wasn't. It was, I, now I felt like kind of like an outcast. Like I knew the the people loved me, like the the fans, they, you know, they always send their messages, but it still felt like I was a, I was outcasted. You weren't welcomed. Yeah, it was like, I, yeah. I was like, why was I outcasted? And I have no idea why. Like it was yeah. just like, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that, and, I've been very, very lucky throughout my career. Um, when the season has ended, I knew where I was going the following season. Right. You know, as soon as the season in Germany ended, I knew I was coming here. Obviously, last year I knew I was coming back. Um, so how hard? How hard is it? You know, to go through a summer of not sure where I'm going to go, not sure if I'm going to get the deal that I want to get, or, or uh, you know, you're it's not like sure. the the fear of the unknown. Because mm -hmm. you know, I've never. Uh, let me see. Panthenico is probably the only place consecutively that I've been where it's like, all right, I played this year. I know I'm going back next right. year. So it was not a worry. So it's like kind of the fear of the unknown, especially even when, you know, you talk financially in terms of like, all right, I have a family. So it's like mm -hmm. I got to make sure that, all right, I'm doing what's best for the family. I'm taking a job that's going to benefit me and my family, not, right. you know, just settling. So it's like right. well, it, you, it's hard. Yeah, you for sure. I mean – this is going back to the single thing versus a family man. It's you need to go to a place where it's you know you feel safe with your family, where you you know you 
you're not going to have to worry when you go on the road what's going to be happening back home, right. but also, you know, the, the monetary value of it. Of course. Um, so sports other than basketball, talk to me. What you got? Oh, man. I'm not an avid golfer, but I've been golfing. You know, my, my father-in-law has, you know, kind of put me in the, the streams of mm-hmm. golfing. So the last few years, like, I've, I've taken up golf, like, not super great at it, but, you know, still I try to practice when I can yeah. and get on courses when I can. And It's important so, to get a, get along with the in-laws. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> but, I mean, we, we've all, it's always been great, but, I mean, he, he's a shorter guy, so taking him to a court, the hoop is not, you know, ideal. <laughs> so what better way than to, to pick up golf? I, like so. Yeah, I can, see you, I can see you losing to him in golf and then being like, all right, let's go to the gym. Yeah. Let's but, <laughs> you know, it's, it's really like, you know, it's I have my moments. It's like, I mean, we've talked before. I told you, like, what golf off it's like one day you can look great mm-hmm. and you can come back the next day and you can look like utter disappointment right. so it's like for that matter it, it's 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 just something to do it's yeah. fun it's, it's yeah. actually like to me it's like a stress reliever sometimes sure where you can just get out on a course you know it's quiet you know yeah. you have to just all you hear is the sound of the club hitting the ball so mm-hmm. I, I think it's it's very relaxing yeah especially with you know get out there with some buddies and uh you know, usually you're not on your phone unless yeah, there's something no, 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 happening. No, it's it's great sure. to just kind of get away for a little bit. But the main thing is to have fun with it because you know, yeah. like, oh, it's, you can't it's, take it seriously. Yeah, it's going to get it bad. Seriously. It's going to get bad. But uh, I used to play baseball. I used to play yeah. baseball. Baseball started off as more so my first love. Uh, definitely was into baseball a lot. Like, was pretty good at it, but just the years got older you know you just like trying to figure out how can you balance the two and it was just yeah i can i can tell you know just uh you know in practice a, a ball comes rolling to you or something you pick it up and you throw it one-handed um you can just tell guys that did and didn't play oh, yeah, baseball for sure, yeah. and you could tell that you played baseball you had a knack for it yeah. uh you know especially you know Ball, ball comes rolling, and you fire one back. It's like, oh, dang, that had some, it had some speed behind it, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, but what do you think? Uh, you know, over here in Europe, uh, very early on, they specialize in sports. You right. know, they, they don't play a ton of different sports no, it's, it's, compared to in the states. You know, you're growing up. You know, we we play basketball, yeah, baseball. Yeah. You know, you know, you got us, variety, soccer, a variety of sports. Yeah, yeah. Here what it's you, like soccer or basketball, right? It's like one right. or the other. So, do you think that that kind of helped you develop other skills throughout? It helps. It helps you a lot. Like baseball, you know, that's like hand eye coordination. Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah, of course, you need it in other sports, but. Imagine you you seeing a ball getting hit off a bat and it's coming at you full speed. Like you gotta have a reaction time, yeah. eye hand coordination to try to catch it. So it's like growing up, you literally have like these these things of like, all right, you're developing skills, like you're developing lateral skills, movements, you know, keeping your eye on the ball. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of people like we talk again with the steroids thing, it's like a guy can be the biggest person in the world, the strongest person in the world. Right. But if he cannot see that baseball, <laughs> it, don't he matter. Is, it doesn't matter. He's yeah, not right. hitting it. Like, you know, you could say, oh, he he's super jacked. Like, he's he's hitting home runs too easily. It's like, yeah, of course, he's got great eye and hand coordination. But put somebody else up there that looks the exact same, right. I guarantee you he's not hitting 70, 80 home runs because right. he can't see the ball. Like If he's not making contact, it no, really doesn't not matter. Not at all. Uh, back to golf. Uh, what, who's the most f- famous person you ever played golf with? Famous? It's just my I, listen. I ain't played with nobody else. Like it's just always been my father-in-law. It's just like a thing for for us. Like in your time in Madrid, no. Well, JC, me and JC Carroll played together. Okay. Like we we've played together uh, a couple times on a course. It's like uh, we actually <laughs> went and got membership. Mm-hmm. It's a bank, uh, Santander Bank. They have like their own like private golf facility so we we got membership for a whole year that's huge so we used to have the day off on mondays so mm-hmm. we used to go mondays either to the driving range or we would play like the back nine yeah or they had like a pitch and putt so we used to we used to hang out that way and kind of go do that something to do on the off sure. days so i think it's important to you know especially if you're in a in a place like madrid to oh, you know yeah, get outside for, see for the sun sure, for, for a little sure. while <laughs> um all right, let's get to uh, some blitz questions. How about that? All right, we can go blitz. This, these are some interesting ones. Uh, which Zagiris player could become TikTok famous? 
So I guess player that could come TikTok famous. I'll say other than you. Yeah. Other, well, you're, I'm, trying, yeah. you're trying to become I'm, TikTok famous right now. According to my brother, I'm 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 nationally famous over here, but oh, I'm, yeah. at home I'm local. So <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I could I could see somebody like Nigel, just just with yeah. his, his personality. I think you know if he was ever to do it, I think with the following he could probably get just because he. He tries to do a lot of things, you know. He's trying to learn a language. I'm, mm-hmm. you know, even given that he's vegan, I'm sure he's he would try like some He'd sort have all of, the vegan followers. Yeah, he would he would try some sort of dish or something vegan wise in Lithuania. I feel like he would be able to to have a a, a great following. I I agree. He's uh he does have a very interesting personality. Uh, he can blend in with a lot of different groups. Of, you know, of course, I think, of course. I think is is kind of his his uh biggest uh you know attribute he's a chameleon there (laughs) he is he is uh most uh jaguars uh, or the jaguars play with the the best style best style most fashionable i don't know man it's tough man i mean like don't be afraid to say yourself hey listen i i have a basic style right now i've never i hadn't really you know tried it but yank yank if paul yank is he he comes in to kill he comes in like it's like a, a regular day and Yank got on, you know, a turtleneck, you know, jeans, uh, scarf. Some Louboutins. Yeah, you know, he comes in. It's like, hey, where you going? Oh, just, you know, just today. I just dropped my kids yeah. off at school. Yeah, I was like, what the <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, you got a little style. I mean, you come in, you have the pea coats and, the, you know, the, the vans and you kind of yeah, build band. a style. I think it, it's, it's hard. You know, again, it's not like, you know, here it's not like the NBA. You know, NBA is like a. A fashion show before yeah, you can yeah, get to the yeah, locker yeah, room. Yeah, yeah. Here it's like you you got one cameraman. He follows you like <laughs> like five steps, and then it's like okay, like nobody sees the outfit. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's like, why am I wearing you this? Know, I think the the whole thing about the NBA fashion is kind of getting out of hand. It's like it seems to be a little too much focus on it. If you ask me, I mean, they're in a different light than most. You know, very true. So it's like people want to see these guys, you know, how they arrive to the game, you know, what, what steps they're taking, you know. Right. I mean, it's funny, though, when you watch Instagram and see the people make fun of it. Like, you know, I think i seen one guy, like, had on a construction outfit, like, saying, like, <laughs> they'll wear anything. And it's right, like, yeah. Right, like, right. So it's, it's funny. Yeah. Uh, top three things you like about Countess? The people, man. I think mm-hmm. the people are very friendly. It's a very friendly country. Um of course, the the arena here, man, yeah, is another amazing. top thing. And then I think just in general, uh, just the vibe, the vibe mm-hmm. around here is you don't pick up a, a ill vibe. You know, some places, even if it's nice, it still has some sort of a vibe where you like uh, it. could be one way or another. I think it's just an easygoing country. Mm-hmm. I, I really like it. It's very quiet. It's kind of up, up my alley, you know, that yeah, quiet, absolutely. peaceful, that nature of it. Yeah, I think we're both cut from the same cloth. I know, you know, what? I'm going to apologize. I know we're not doing our blitz questions here. We're not, we're not answering these, these very fast, uh, <laughs> but I think me and you are both cut from the same cloth of like, we're just simple guys go yes. about our business. Um, but yeah, I, I agree when people, when people ask, you know, Lithuania, what's that like? You yeah. know, most people from Texas aren't, aren't very familiar. <laughs> they still think it's Russia. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. But they say, what's that? What's that like? And it's like, man, I love it. You know, the people, yeah. the people are awesome. It's a, it's a very simple way of living, um, which, you know, for me is exactly what I want. It's, you know, it's who I want to be. Yeah, of course. Of course. Um, the, <laughs> this is one of my favorite ones. The loudest screaming coach you've ever had to work with. Well, <laughs> I wonder who. I don't know. I don't know. But, I mean, listen, it's like... You hear it, you understand it, you you know where it's coming from, and it's like, at the end of the day, it's him. It, yeah. it's, it's him. So it's like, you it's take never it never personal? No, it's never, never personal. Because at the end, after he does it, he comes right back to you and he explains yeah. like, yeah. hey, like, why? Like, you know, he asks you. So it's like, and he to me, I respect him more because he's upfront and he's honest. Like, mm-hmm. he's not going to... He's not gonna sugarcoat it. He's not gonna just let you like walk through like, oh, okay, yeah, you know, you you made a made a mistake. It's right. like no, like listen. He's gonna let you know. This is your mistake, like you yeah. know, and it's like, but then, but right behind it is the the motivation of, hey, come on, I know you can do it. Let's yeah, go, like absolutely. so. It's like, you know, yeah, he's a, he's he's probably the loudest screaming coach I've had. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's who, it's who he is. Yeah, my favorite thing about it is that it, that he's very upfront about what he wants and how he wants it. Very particular. Um, you know, I think uh, a lot of coaches will 
say one thing, but then yeah, they they might go back on it. Like no, that's not the case. It, what he says is, is how he wants it, and it's very clear. You know, there's no room for for doubt in what he in no, what he for says. Sure, for sure. Um, any career decisions that you regret or kind of wish they went a different way? Uh, I mean, it's, it's me. regrets a tough regrets a tough. It's word. just tough. Thing. I mean, when you, when you think of terms of things that you do when you're young, like I mean, it's multiple things I've probably done when I was young, just starting to you know get money and everything. You know, bags I probably bought I shouldn't oh, have bought. Yeah, you know, yeah, things yeah, like sure. that. It's like probably the noise. Like you know, just. Uh, you regret some things, but at the end, you know, it's, it's live and learn. You live in yeah. life and you learn it. You learn it from your mistakes. For sure. Yeah, there's a that, – that's funny that you say that, to to buy something that's expensive or a designer or whatever, and then the next day you're like, ah, you, you check the bank account. Because like, it's cause, cause it's like collecting that. dust. Like, I think I got like four or five bags, and I'm like – You can only it. use one. Yeah, it's like I <laughs> bought it because it was nice. It looked nice. You know, I wanted it, but then it's like – how often am I using it? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Um, secret conspiracies. Any any that any that you uh, believe in or? Man, listen, I, I believe in a lot of things that happen. It's hard, you know. It's hard to talk about because people will be like, you know, why do people you think come at that? You yeah, you know. So it's sure. like sometimes I stay reserved about them, but I definitely have my my doubts about things, you know, that you're given or told, you know. Any of them that are light and not that you care to express that aren't uh, you know I mean, too deep? I mean, it, I mean, it's TV, but I mean, okay, for instance, like the whole coronavirus thing is like, you know, how, you know, it's kind of just weird how this thing just like pops up. Like, <laughs> it's just like, it's, it's like it, it, it pops up and it just takes off like this. And it's like, okay, if you know this is like a serious virus here, like, how did you yeah. not like think to say, okay, let's kind of contain this yeah. now? It's like, yeah, we knew about the coronavirus for a while, and then it's like, okay, and you just waited till this thing widespread right. to say, yeah, yeah. It, it happened here like quite some time. But I mean, it's just like some things I feel like are a test of seeing how like people react. I think you know, a lot of people say, oh, that's just hearsay, but it's like you know, these, these things happen like for a reason, you know, and that's that's most as I can say, just for for safety purposes. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. No. But I mean, these things happen for a reason. I think pandemics have happened, you know, for a reason to kind of get reaction to see how it evolves on people, how people react. You know, I, I think a lot of things are done for a reaction to control or see like basically like the population, how 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 things, you know, act in a certain population. Yeah. Um, I think this is, you know, I, I said we were cut from the same cloth. This is definitely one difference between us. You're a much, much more deeper thinker than I am. I'm uh, like, I'm like, oh, coronavirus. Oh, okay. And you're you're over there like, man, where does this stuff come from? I wonder. Yeah, I mean, but when you think about it, bro, it's like, come on, man. Like, you, you know, like if, if if you know you have something in the house, like, okay, maybe a bad example, but it's like having a spider or something that you know if it gets out, it can affect a lot of people, but you already have it in your area. You can just simply contain it or dismantle it or whatever, okay. and you know it's there, but then you just decide to say, okay. Just let it go. Yeah, if, if it goes, it goes. Whatever happens, you know, okay, we'll deal with it. We'll deal with it whenever it happens, and it's like, well, damn, like, if you could have stopped it right then, stop it. Like, what's the purpose of letting it widespread yeah. and cause a, a epidemic sure. to where now you got more casualties and things you got to really, like, try to account for and explain when you could have simply been like, well, we already know how to kind of stop it or we know it exists, so we've already tried to figure out a way to stop it. We're going to try to contain it before it just gets out of hand. Yeah. It's like... It, you know, it, and it might be a yeah. bad example, but it's like if you, no, are, yeah, if mean, you can I, contain yeah. something and already, like, end it early, why let it get to a point to where it's like, is that out of our control? Like, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned that example because uh, when we were in Turkey this year, uh, I was it was me and Mr. Vegetable Ni- Nigel walking <laughs> up a path, and uh, there was a spider. And this is... You know, I've only this is our our preseason camp, so I've only known Nigel for a couple of weeks or so. And uh, you know, uh, uh, there's a spider right right next to me. You know, it's and it's on the ground. We're outside, but I stomp on it, and Nigel's like, "Dude, what are you doing?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Spider, uh, I killed it." 
Like I, I don't prefer to have you know bugs and stuff like that right. around me. And obviously, you're talking about something deeper. Of but, course, no. But, but spider in your house, what are you doing? No, no, then I'm killing it. Like, I, I, <laughs> I agree. I, 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 I agree. Already know, if, I agree. If, if I can't get it out the door and get it away, there is like, no trying to no. help. I'm not getting two plates and and trying to force like, it. See, out. my wife is like, soon, soon, I'm telling you, as soon as she see a spider or something, it's like, babe, 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 and it's like, what? And then it's like, uh, okay, where is it? Yeah. And then it's like, it's over there, lad. Grab like, the shoe. And then sometimes she'll be like, but you know, like you shouldn't kill it. We should try to put it outside. Mm-hmm. And I'm like. Okay, you want to pick it up and put it outside? Yeah, like, yeah, let me, let me it was an imminent, it was an later, imminent yeah. threat in the house. I got rid of it. Like, Especially with kids, for <laughs> sure. Um, if you're a GM of a basketball club, let's just say any yearly club or y'all get us, uh, what would be some changes that you do or some stuff that you that you implement? What, what would be some of the things that you, you work towards? Uh, just, you know, for me, like, I, I like uh, – what they call like a blue collar team, you know, a little, little mm-hmm. mix of the, of the of a flash, you know, a little excitement. But I like that team that you can put together. That uh, what we call in the states is having dogs. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know, yeah, your dogs. team full of dogs, dogs that yeah. you know, woof, woof. you got all the types of the the things you need. You know, you got your hard nosed rebounders, you got your bruisers, you got your guards that are you know tough nosed. Like I would try to. More so as a GM, try to build a team based off of that. I think people go more so like, all right, I need points. I need this guy, you know, and they mess the team and it mm-hmm. looks good on paper until you see it playing. And then you're like, they, don't, get punked. they don't mesh well because sure, sure, now sure. it's like it's just out of balance. But it's like if you can put together like just guys, like if you can find the hungriest guys yeah, and put them all together, guys. like it literally a, a, a put things in perspective. Is there anybody in your league that, that you think of whenever, you know, outside of Jagadis that you think of whenever you, if you were to put a team together, you'd say, I'd, I'd want to put that guy on my team? I mean, when you look at a guy like um, Will Clyburn, like his, yeah, his type of, a, 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 like, to me, like, he he's a he's kind of like that, I'll, I'll call him like a, a star glue guy because, mm-hmm. you know, he has like that star mentality, but he's like the glue guy because right. if you, I mean, Cheska's a, a, a great club, you know, they're playing well, but, if you watch them, he's like that biggest missing piece. If mm-hmm. you watch what they did last year and this year, yeah. talking about a guy who can defend, he rebounds, he can handle the ball, he can, you know, he can start the break, he can shoot yeah. it a little bit. So it's like he has multiple intangibles. He's that that ultimate glue guy that kind of makes things work, you know. Yeah. So it's like when you try, you see guys like that, like that. That, sure. that that's somebody you will want, like you want that type of caliber, because now mm-hmm. you you know you can depend on different things. Like he can do this, he can right. do that. So I think I think a cool thing about watching him is is he can have an off night shooting or just whatever, but then he'll end up with five offensive rebounds, like and, something know, twelve that, points, something that of, changes the game. Yeah, like. <laughs> uh, you know he can obviously guard, he can you know guard different positions. Um, good player. Uh, any any fears you have on the basketball court? Really, just losing, man. It's it's like that that fear of losing. Mm-hmm. Like it's tough. Like especially like big games, like championship games and stuff like that. It's like that knowing how how you would feel after. Yeah, of course, man. It's like you, you don't want to be. I, I you've been on that side before. I've been on that side before. It's not like a. Yeah. It's it's not hard to come back from, but the feeling is just so different. Like mm-hmm. you know, it's like going into championship games, big games. It's like. You see yourself winning, right? Like you don't try to look at the the losing part of it, but it's just that fear of losing where you like, no, I can't lose this. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, speaking of winning and losing big games, I mean, you've done, you've achieved the ultimate goal here. Yeah, you know? your league, man. It's, how how was how was that as far that's as that's probably the best. That was like my best year, probably overseas. Like yeah. you know, just because we won everything, everything, yeah. everything. We started with the Super Cup. To you know the Copa del Rey, and then you know it's like Euro League happens, mm-hmm. and then you you go on the Sweet Barca in the the finals, and you win the the Spanish Cup, and it's right. like you completely took everything, yeah. like, and you know people don't really give the Super Cup much credit, like, but it's like the first cup it's of the year, like it's still a trophy, yeah. like so it's like Somebody's you, gotta win it. <laughs> yeah, you you win that, and they call it a poker. It's like you got you got the best of four. It's like right. come on, man, like yeah. how how sweeter could it get? You know, I think whenever you look at, you know, teams that win triple crowns and stuff, it's impressive. But then when you do it in the ACB, 
it's even more impressive. I mean, it's the toughest league in the world. I mean, uh, you know, outside, of, yeah, outside NBA, we, we we won it, and you got Marius and Lockman. <laughs> like, yeah, we beat you guys. Right after you won your league. Just like, just yeah, like, t- tell that story because uh, I don't know what what place Marius's team was in, but I think that story is hilarious. So we we were we had just won the Euro League. We had played Basconia. We had to play Basconia like Tuesday night. Like, right, like, literally, like, the early was Sunday, we played Tuesday night. One of them games, like, okay, we win, we win. If we lose, hell, we are locked up first place of the Spanish League. So it was like everybody still was on this this high roller coaster. We just finally got the monkey off our back year league. So we lose the best going there, no problem. We get back to practice. Okay, we got Man Racer coming in last game of the regular season. And, uh, they're, and they're no, I mean, they're no good. They're, 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 they're in the regulation zone, I think. Them and uh, – it was uh, San Sebastian. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> they needed to win in order to stay up. And if they They're won. They're playing for their lives. Yeah, if they won, <laughs> San Sebastian goes goes down, goes uh, the second division. So we're playing Marsh and them. Like, we're, we're, we're kind of up. Like, the game's kind of like, you know, it's home crowd. We finally get to present the trophy. So the, yeah, the vibe, big, the emotion's yeah, kind of yeah. high. So then all of a sudden, like, they start hitting shot after shot after shot. Like, these dudes aren't missing. Like, literally caught a wave, bro. Like, so we end up losing. They're celebrating like they just won a championship. Yeah, like, like, they, they, they like, just, like, they just took the trophy with them back home. Like, and so, like, next day, like, we look at the paper. San Sebastian's pissed off at us. Like, we're all oh, there on the – still on the EuroLeague high, you know. We got relegated and man racer. But, like, Mars is like – that was, like, his championship. Because right, it was like right. – yeah, we beat you guys, you know, right right yeah. when we needed it. So It is interesting, though, to look at different clubs across Europe and to think, like, you know, there's some clubs that they approach it of we just want to stay in the first league to where, you know, if you're Real Madrid, you're thinking we want to win Euro League or we want to win the league. Exactly. And it's crazy how, you know, when different teams have different goal set. It's, 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 it's very imaginative. But it's, the thing is, too, it's like, again, everything boils down to budgets. Yeah. Like, you know, you got, you talk about Real Madrid, great budget. Yeah. Then you take a team like, you know, Manresa or San Sebastian, they don't have relatively a uh, big budget, but they get guys that have, you know, potentials that right. can, can do a lot of things. So it's like, if budgets are starting to be slightly equal, like, imagine what could possibly right, happen right. In, in certain leagues. Like, it, 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 it would never happen, but sure, um, imagine, course. like, you know, if everything, if NBA was here, like mm-hmm. if, if people had the money, like NBA to build teams, right? These leagues, leagues in Europe would be like, you don't, you really, I mean, you really don't know who will win right. it, but yeah. it really would be, be like all top up. to be bottom. This yeah. is gonna be crazy. Yeah, and I think that's that it is a cool thing about the NBA. Um, you know, everybody has a similar budget, and you know, it's up to the GMs. That's, I think, why GMs get so much credit in, in the NBA because they're the ones they that do. They, they draft it. and they. But it's still it's still the, the, the guys themselves. Like, because sure. it's like, when you talk in terms of NBA, it's like you're getting paid all this money to perform. And it's like, here, we get paid a decent amount of money to mm-hmm. perform, and we're out there giving it all. Like, you, you're like on the floor, dying for loose balls, you know, everything. Like, you're playing the sure. game like – how basketball is meant to be played. And then you get to the NBA, you watch some games, it's like guys not diving on the ball for, on the floor for a loose ball. It's like you, you look at the scores, 83-52, and it's like, dude, you're in the league. Like, what yeah. what, what is going on? Like, You shouldn't be taking anything for Like, that. Yeah, like I get it. Like, it's a lifestyle. But it's like, are you playing this? Are you playing the game for the lifestyle or are you playing it because you have the passion and the love for it? It's Absolutely. like anybody, you could put anybody in there to make millions of dollars and just – score 52 points and, and have it in the third quarter. It's yeah. like, or do you really want to play the game? Right, like, play, right. Like, like, people are here to see you play. Like Absolutely. <laughs> um, this one, I'm, I'm very interested to hear your answer because, you know, obviously we have all the same teammates. The weirdest teammate habits you have ever seen, and I already know there's, one, there's one teammate you got you to gotta go after. This is me. Whoosh. Weirdest. Ugh. I mean, it's in terms of how weird we talking. I mean, Zach probably has the weirdest. Yes, yes the he does. Weirdest. <laughs> like, I mean, we all laugh about it, but it's like if you pay attention to a great guy, great, great Unbelievable guy. Unbelievable guy. But subs in, goes immediately to the ref. Got to touch the ball. Touches the ball, takes Got the ball from the ref. Like, it's so funny because when he comes in, like, 
opposing guys, they be looking at like, what the hell is he yeah, doing? Like, yeah. hey, yo, yo, give me the ball. And it's like, nah, like, let me kind of adjust the ball, like, you know. Well, a lot of times the ref doesn't want to give him the ball. And, uh, and he goes they, and take Because it. it's not, you know, we, we don't have possession of the ball. And they're like, no, you're on defense. He's like, I know, I just, but I have I to touch the ball. To touch it. Just run back. But it, it's funny. I mean, it, it, he probably has the weirdest, like, the antics before, but he's a great guy, like, funny guy. I actually love being around the guy. Oh, man, he is awesome. It's a thrill. Oh, the backpack, yes. That's, the backpack is like CVS, for those that don't know. CVS is like a, a pharmacy in the U.S. It's a big pharmacy brand company. Uh, so go like, there to get anything. Yeah, anything. So he's got whatever you need. He's got uh, sanitized gloves, you know, hot cream, whatever. I'd be pro for what you need. Some hand spray. <laughs> whatever for, you, you know. need, you know, he's got like the sports side of everything in that Truly bag. Truly does. Truly <laughs> Never does. leave home without it. <laughs> and it's funny because, uh, you know, I have had, you know, my parents come to games and, you know, they're here when we run out. And my dad said, did I see Zach run out with a <laughs> backpack on? And I said, <laughs> yes, you you know your eyes weren't playing tricks on you. You did, and he said, "Why?" And I said, "That's his life backpack." You know, right. yeah. It's, it's, and it's and, his and his you know what? Line. There's been times where he is much more prepared than anybody else no, because of is. that backpack. He is phone I, charger, I, everything. He has everything in there. <laughs> it's so funny because like last game, I think he left it in the middle like of the area, and Sars mm-hmm. almost tripped over. And he, I swear he wanted to. I see he looked like he wanted to toss that damn back somewhere. He Sling like it gen- up into the he generally put it to the side, but like it's like. <laughs> But he does like literally, like uh, literally. If you watch when we run out, he drops, he drops it. it. I, I he know because I ran out behind like him. The, it, I, I've ran out behind him one time. And and I was like, tripped. no, it never again. I was like, because I literally stopped and had to move the bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, so lit. I'm, I'm just gonna like, go ahead really, of him. You know, if you're taking, if you know people behind you, you take your backpack on and you kind of like put it over to the side one way or another. He literally just like drops, drops it. it. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, Nigel and I have almost have almost tripped over it before. Uh, but yeah, there's many times where, where I've been like, man, ah, crap, my phone's almost dead. Zach, you got your charger? Yep. Hey, he's always prepared. Uh, you're a sneakerhead. Favorite pair of sneakers? Oof, that's tough, man. Yeah, that yeah, is yeah. tough. That is tough. Because I used to have Jordans, you know. I, that's real, it's, I like Air Maxes really now. Yeah, like, you I you like, have a bunch of great like Air Maxes. The Air Maxes are now like the, the thing, like, you know, different styles. Like mm-hmm. even the retros, like the 95s, mm-hmm. the 90s. Like if I can get a good pair of Air Maxes, man, I'll wear them things out. Yeah. Uh, Do you ever hoop in Jordans? Yeah, yeah. I used to hoop in Jordans a lot. Like the 11 Lows was like my favorites to oh, play man. in. Like especially when I was in Panama, like I, I probably like bought so many 11 Lows. Yeah. Like, and I hoop in a variety of shoes now. Like, now I try to just wear whatever's comfortable or whatever I think I like and see if it's comfortable. If it's not comfortable, I'm not going to wear yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Eventually, if, if it has value, I'll keep it, maybe try to sell it. But if not, then I'll try to give it to, like, young guys who need them. So. Right. Uh, yeah, you've – you. Uh, I've had a couple different of pairs of Greek Freaks. Yeah. And uh, I had one pair, of, you know, they were customized that my agent had sent. I was like, man, it's sweet. <laughs> then you come in the next next couple weeks with – even better pairs. I was like, dang, <laughs> let me let me let me have a let me have I a week a, at least. I be a, at least a shoe designer, man. Like, yeah, literally, yeah, yeah. like I I can design customized shoes. Yeah. You could tell me like, hey, can you customize these for like my team colors? And I'll literally like play with the colors and be like, yo, this is this might be fire. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. You've 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 came in with some great ones. Um, all right, last question, and this is this is a more serious question: leader or follower? How do you see yourself? Back in the day, I would say I was a follower because I was mm-hmm. more so trying to fit in. But the older I got now, I look at myself as as a leader. Absolutely. Like, you know, I think um, people more so now I see myself as a leader. I even feel like a leader because I'm always questioned about what I think or mm-hmm. how would you go about a situation. So I think um, more so now a leader. Um, you know, being a follower, you know, it depends on who you're following. Mm-hmm. You, can follow, you can follow the right people and kind of learn, but... You know, when you follow the wrong people and you kind of get into bad habits and, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, into things that can, can land you in hot water, it becomes, you know, kind of a thing of a past. So it's like being a leader, I feel like especially as the older I get, I'll be 33 Sunday. Right, so yeah. I did not know your birthday <laughs> yeah, was coming up. I got yeah, to go to the store get you something. Sunday I'll be 33. So, you know, it, it's like you have to, like, kind of lead the way. And even if I'm not leading by, you know, talking, I try to lead by example that, you know. Yeah. 
Go ahead. Oh, because, you know, you, you get guys, you know, we, you, like you mentioned Sarge, you know, he yells and these stuff. And it's like you, you try to tell guys, like, you know, listen, like, it, it could be worse. Mm-hmm. Like, for sure. <laughs> you know, it's just like you got to take it as it is and, you know, just, you know, keep moving forward. We all, you all get frustrated. Mm-hmm. Everybody gets frustrated. I'm sure he gets frustrated one way or another. Like, we're all human. Mm-hmm. But it's like you have to you know, understand where it's coming from and, and move on from it and take it. If you take it the wrong way, of course, it could lead to things going south. But if you yeah. take it in the right manner and say, okay, and see the side that the person's coming from, it can only benefit you. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, I've seen two parts of you now. Uh, you know, this is obviously my second year in the systems. And you come halfway through the year, I thought it was incredible how fast you picked up everything. So for maybe a week or two, you were observing, kind of following, you know, you're asking questions, your, your curiosity about how things worked and everything around here was, was incredible. And you picked it up really fast. And then very soon thereafter, you became a leader, you would, you know, take guys aside. And I think that's your, one of your biggest strengths as a leader. It's not, you're not going to say something, you know, in front of everybody or, you know, embarrass somebody, but no. you're great at taking guys to the side and say, hey, you know, you're doing this, you're doing that. And or like, even with my shot, you know, we shoot together a lot and you'll say, hey, you know, you're leaning back or you're following the ball. You know, you, you, know, you say all these things and uh, I always, always end up making the next shot after yeah. you correct my, but, my, and, my and, miss. And it's only because, like, you know, I, I try to help, you know, yeah, and it's like it's always now, like, place. Again, it's like not on the downside of my career, but like now it's like that, what everybody calls that transitional period. Like now, okay, yeah, I used to be the young guy. Now I'm like the vet. And you it's been like, through the war. Yeah. yeah, it's like now if I can help you, I try to help. Like if you take it, you take it. If you don't, you don't. That's why I try to help the young guys. Sure, I'm like, sure. hey, you know, look, look, this is all This is all I'm saying to you. Like just kind of observe how you're feeling. You know, it's like they go back and forth and you're like, but I'm watching you. So it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. that's the only reason why I'm telling you. Like right. I, I see it. So it's like, just, just, just take yeah. my advice. And I think it would be a, a form of selfishness if you didn't, you know, share what you've learned and share, uh-huh. you know, the, the things that you've learned over, what, a 12, 13 year career yeah. so far. It's, it, it, I think it'd be selfish. So, um, I, that's something I've really admired and tried to pick up from you, you know, as as the season has gone on. Oh, I appreciate it, man. Absolutely. We appreciate you. Uh, I just want to give a quick shout out to uh, the Jagira Shop at uh, jagirashop.lt. All the prizes that we're giving away are from there today. Um, go, go check them out and uh, get your merchandise from there. Casey Rivers, thank you very much. Right, thank you, Tommy. Mm-hmm.